For more Easter resources, visit my.salvos.org.au. Good morning. It's a real joy for us to worship together on this Good Friday. These are special and significant days for us and how wonderful it is that we can meet all together to bring our worship to our great God.
Our reading this morning is taken from Isaiah 53, verses 3 to 7. Isaiah 53, verses 3 to 7. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our affirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Amen. Let us join together for prayer. God of universe, God of earth, our God, this Friday morning, there is a question that sits heavily, like a weight upon our soul. It remains ill-formed at the edges of our consciousness, for we think people of faith may not ask it. Where are you? Where are you in the midst of a darkness so deep that it feels like we will never escape its life-exhausting grasp? We are mindful that the story of Good Friday is one that is marked by such darkness and even despair. Despite our insatiable appetite for joy, our addiction to feeling good, we refuse to move too quickly from the events of Good Friday because we recognise that as difficult as it is, it is good for us to sit with you and ponder the cost and meaning of the cross. We recognise that we are somehow woven into the narrative of that day such that it becomes for us our story too. We all like sheep have gone astray. All of us have turned to going our own way. And you, Lord, laid on him the iniquity of us all. God of universe, God of earth, our God, as we negotiate for ourselves the personal cross-shaped meanings of self-sacrifice, courage, grace, love. May they be renewed in us today and as a resource for the world in the days ahead. In the name of the Christ, through the Spirit, we pray. Amen. I wonder what you would say is the biggest day of the year. Maybe your birthday, maybe a special anniversary, Maybe Grand Final Day, maybe Anzac Day. Or for the Christian, perhaps Christmas Day or Pentecost or Easter Sunday, or today, Good Friday. For the people of God in the Old Testament, Passover was their big celebration, their big commemoration. Every year on this very special day, a great celebration happened. And that's actually what was going on in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus when he was arrested and tried and condemned and crucified when he died and when he rose again. So let's put Passover into its context. Exodus chapter 12 verses 1 to 14 tells the story of the first Passover. God's people had been in Egypt for 400 years. First as free people, and then after a change of government, they became slaves. Towards the end, Moses became the leader. He went to Pharaoh 10 times to ask for the release of the people. Nine times Pharaoh refused, and as a result, God sent plagues of frogs and locusts and turning the river into blood. 
And the tenth time when Pharaoh re refused to allow the people of God to leave slavery in Egypt, Moses announced to him the worst of all plagues. The firstborn male of every family living in Egypt would die. However, for the people of God, Moses gave an instruction of how they would be spared in this situation. What they needed to do was they were to select a one-year-old lamb, uh, perfect, without blemish or defect. They were to slaughter the lamb without breaking its legs, paint some of the blood on the doorposts and the lintel, and then as the angel of death came through Egypt, the angel would pass over the house with the blood painted on the doorposts. They were to roast the lamb. They were to consume the lamb. At the same time, they were to, uh, to eat the meal with uh, bitter herbs and with unleavened bread, and they were to do that in their coat and with their sandals on, ready to go. They needed to be ready to leave this bondage at any moment. All the meat had to be either eaten or incinerated so that there was a complete separation from the past. Nothing was to be left behind. So important was the Passover in the history and theology of the Israelites that the calendar actually changed so that the month that included Passover became the first month of the year. So the result of the Passover was deliverance and redemption. God delivered the people from slavery. God redeemed them to go to the land that he had promised their forefather Abram. God redeemed them to minister his love and his grace to the people of the world. Now, friends, there's a great animated video available uh, produced by Silvo Studios and written and narrated by Major Len Turner. Great uh, expansion of the whole Passover scene uh, in the Easter story. And I highly recommend it to you for further learning. Now we turn over to the day of Jesus. Matthew 26, verses 17 to 30 the story of Jesus, the Lamb of God. So here he is, he's with his friends, celebrating the Passover, reenacting the feast of the Passover, remembering God's action of delivering his forefathers from the bondage of Egypt and redeeming them for mission in the world. The center of the whole meal was the Lamb. Jesus knew that this was his last meal before his crucifixion. And he also knew that he was to become the Passover lamb for all. So at 9 a.m., the high priest tied the Passover lamb to the altar in preparation for sacrifice. At the same time, Jesus, the lamb of God, was nailed to the cross. For six hours, both the Passover lamb and Jesus, the lamb of God, awaited death. And finally, at 3 p.m., the high priest ascended the altar and slaughtered the Passover lamb. And Jesus, nailed to the cross, cried out before he died, it is finished. The result, Jesus, the lamb of God, brought deliverance from the curse of sin for all who will believe. Deliverance from the curse of death. Sustenance and protection for the journey of life. Redemption to live lives that honour God. Redemption to become, become God's missionaries, expressing his love to each other and to the world. So what does he call us to do in response. He says, therefore, in the words of Paul, offer yourselves as living sacrifices. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, 
but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Therefore, lead a life worthy of your calling. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, Make al making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. And therefore, imitate God in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who gave himself for our deliverance and our redemption. And the therefore, offer yourselves as living sacrifices. Lead lives worthy of your calling. Imitate God in everything you do. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, in response to your sacrifice, we offer ourselves as living sacrifices. Purify us, strengthen us, and counsel us to lead lives that are worthy of you. Guide us and empower us to imitate you with sacrificial love for each other and for your world. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
For more Easter resources, visit my.salvos.org.au. Thank <laughs> you.